Hey guys, Anthony, 4B4 Diesel. Got a quite a bit of interesting information here, and I'm gonna try and whack it all into one video, but if at the end of the video I'm not successful, I may do some separate videos on this vehicle as well. So, this vehicle was basically broken down, not starting, so the vehicle would not start, okay? Now, as I say, generally the only reason these vehicles don't start or run is if they haven't got fuel pressure for whatever reason which isn't many reasons generally they don't stop so even if they're running bad they don't stop they still run um, so it was a bit of an urgent thing to get it repaired and get it going again i couldn't fit it in so i sent it to one of our 4 before diesel workshop partners who i know are really good and patient with diagnostics and follow the step-by-step -step processes to diagnose to work out what's wrong with a vehicle Maybe a little bit of swap gnostics included, but mainly diagnostics, not guess gnostics or too much swap gnostics. Okay, now, so let's firstly say that some of the basics, you know, you just what they've done is they've checked some of the basics. They've noticed a whole lot of other things on the vehicle that need doing. I'll give you a little bit of history with it. I've never worked on it, okay? It's somebody that's sort of local to me who I supplied injectors for. I'm not sure whether it was a year or two or three ago or many, whenever, whenever it was anyway. And he rebuilt the engine. It was, if I remember correctly, it was the leaking seats. It's an 06 or 07 or something like that, I don't know. Let me have a look what it is. 06, right? So it was the leaking seats. It was the blocked oil pickup from memory. He's a mechanic by trade, all right? Now, without picking on anyone too much, um, you know, you can be a mechanic or not, you can have a piece of paper or not, you can be good with a piece of paper and you can be bad with a piece of paper and vice versa. You can be really good and not have a piece of paper and you can be crap. The piece of paper is just a piece of paper, right? I can show you a piece of paper, it doesn't really matter. Um, what matters is, um, there's a number of things on this vehicle that were missed. He rebuilt the engine, at least he got the right injectors, I think, I hope, whatever. He got them from me, so fingers crossed should be right. Um, but look, so he's come back to us when the vehicle wouldn't start. Now, remember what I said at the start of the video, nothing stops these vehicles just about. So, what do I usually always say? Don't blame the Toyota. You know, it's the person who worked on it, usually. Things that are out of control are often a fuel contamination. There is a lot of fuel contamination that is within the owner's control or the technician's control if they both know and understand how clean things need to be on these systems pretty easy to do as long as you understand you don't want to work on it with all this dirt this is the thing right you know you wouldn't see people wouldn't bring a view this isn't dirty i know there's people going oh you know that's nothing we get oh, i get that but you know what it doesn't need to be like that right it's much easier to work on cars and get it right the first time if it's clean okay so the vehicle was rebuilt and installed by the owner now let's just have a quick look around at a couple of things we've noticed there is a bit of a slight oil leak. Well, I've noticed some hose clamps down on that hose on the back there, right? Rather than the standard uh, automatic tension clamps, I prefer a bit of oil on the back of the rocker cover. If you look down underneath that PCV or crankcase ventilation pipe bracket, there's a crack at the valve cover. It's running down along the top of the head. It's not wet in front of that much. <laughs> there's oil at the front as well. So. Look, valve cover gaskets don't leak, so I just want to point out that if you've got an oil leak or a weep, it's most likely a poor installation or you've got a cracked valve cover from someone over tightening it, most likely. Now, just having a look around over this side, I'm not going to point out everything, but I'm going to point out a few things that you've got to watch out for. And there is certainly some brackets and things not fitted quite correctly on this vehicle. One of the important things that our 4 before diesel workshop partner noticed is the deterioration of the drive belt okay so this is not a genuine drive belt now this is another reason I just want to point out that we recommend using genuine parts we know how long they last we see them at 150,000 K's without these cracks okay so that's why we talk about the big front engine job and upgrading to the two-piece pump you can see this has been fitted with another one-piece pump so another big job when it's time for, to change that water pump. Um, you can see some other things going on here, so I just thought I'd mention that there. This is all 
this is not a who did this job we're going to be nice but it's kind of a it's a bit of a who did this job okay you can see some extra hose here to stop some rubbing on some hose clamps again remember we don't like the hose clamps we like the genuine hoses the genuine automatic self-tensioning clamps um, and of course the clips that go on the hoses genuine this is not again this looks like one of those gates hoses and whatever and people replace hoses because old school you know they used to work on an old school other brands you know typically your Holdens and Fords where hoses used to deteriorate crack and split and regularly have problems um, in this case when you change it to these aftermarket hoses I don't know if there's any reason that they've improved over the years and I don't think they're as good as the original Toyota quality ones like this one here's one of the original hoses right never seen a problem with one with the original clamps on it beautiful are they still fitted correctly looks pretty reasonable without looking too hard but without looking too hard we can see bolts missing there's a bolt missing center of the picture if we go down on the fuel return line there center of the picture another bolt missing we've got those clamps in that's good what about under there right so there's a few things going on there's no need for it just original genuine parts and fitted back the way the engineers designed and the way it was done from factory okay so I just wanted to point those few things out so a few basic um, steps were taken to diagnose the vehicle and it can be very time consuming to do a diagnosis you can follow step by step you know checking fuel pressure look you, you can go by the book or you can go by what we've found the reasons we've found these vehicles to not start like you know check your fuses check the injector driver over there right that is a cause of them not starting sometimes if someone's shorted something out you might blow a fuse some of those are in there anyway you go and check all your basics your fuel pressure and you go well, why is this thing not starting and you can spend a couple of hours doing that so it can be quite a time waster if the whole cause of the engine not starting is the person that worked on it last or the person that put the engine back in now on the, on the back of the Prado block, there's a, an earth, and there's also an earth on the back of the Hilux as well. And this is not the first time this has happened, okay? So not the first time, which is why I'm doing a video. When it's once or twice or not very often, it's happened enough times now. Not many, but it's happened enough that um, it's time to tell everyone this is a possibility. If you've got a Hilux that's broken down or won't start, and you know it's had an engine out, replaced, or similar work, it may affect there's an earth I'm not going to be able to get down there and show you I'm not too fussed about it I can show you sort of where it is at the moment if you go to the wiring loom down the bottom here if you follow this wiring loom down see this big fat one here right follow that down and there's a bracket there center of the picture keep following it down well it's not that one okay so don't worry about that you need to come back okay the best way to look at it is did you like that? I got you following that one, it wasn't it? Look straight down near the oil filter. See that one there? Center of the picture, right? You can see the the wire coming this way, and then you've got the corrugated split tubing north from the center of the picture with the tape on it. That's the one. If you follow that down, that needs to be earthed. You can earth it wherever you want, really, but you know, at the moment, this one. This was actually found kind of by a bit of luck, right? Because these are those sorts of things that you know, how do you know? How, how would you know and how do you work out that someone didn't connect an earth or they disconnect, left it loose so that the, um, you know, so that it's going to come loose again at a later date and cause these problems? It's a really hard thing to diagnose and luckily there was only a couple hours spent on it, but it was getting dark and lucky there's two people because if one person's trying to start the car and, and the other person isn't there and you've, you're not going to find this. So lucky there's two people working on the car one person's cranking while they're doing some testing and the other person just because it's getting dark notice some sparks and if you can see down there in the middle of the picture right there I'll try and get in there a bit more for you right that's it there right bada bing right that's the end of your earth and that was loose guys and there was throwing sparks out and whatever so if anyone had known then all you'd have to do is tighten that bolt up and the car will start. But all this time was spent trying to diagnose it. So a um, couple of things are going to happen from this. Hopefully the owner is going to take a bit more care and whatever and understand with things um, how things need to be done and all the nuts and bolts should be back in there. That's why the engineers designed it that way. Um, it's also been noted that it's got the short suction control valve. So this is a good video for those people that don't know where the suction control valve is and 
whether it's short or not needs to be upgraded it's something you can get at the same time as your injector kit or if you can't afford it at the time then you do your injectors and you can organize it separately later um, I'm gonna try and zoom in on it I don't know how it's gonna work out I'm gonna jam this torch down there how's that sit that there now the SCV is just to, if you can see the light and then you can see the rubber hose and then you can see that fuel line that connects where it connects onto the pump. If you look, I'm talking about the steel one that's got the U shape in it there, right? And on that note, I'm gonna say that the clamp's missing. This is a really important one, guys. The clamp's missing from the dipstick. I'm gonna try and point for you over there at the end of my fingertip, right there. There's a clamp missing from the dipstick to the fuel pipe and there was a workshop that I certainly didn't recommend um, that worked on the head police officer's car in a small town and let the apprentice do the job and left that clamp off and while he was away on his trip that rubbed through and then he got it replaced I think somewhere and it rubbed through again so even I don't know if that was a Toyota dealer or what, it was a Toyota part getting the pipe. So that was a heap of drama. It's just not necessary, guys. You can see the clean spot. So I've been distracted, but it's important information. See the clean spot on the pipes, right, on the dipstick, center of the picture. There's meant to be a clamp that goes there. So that clamp certainly needs to be replaced on this one. They're nowhere near rubbing at the moment, but it probably obviously depends if you've bent the fuel pipe and how you've installed it. Now back to what I was showing you, the SCV, all right? Middle of the picture. See that sucker right? I'm going to point kind of like right at the end of my fingertip right there. You can see it. And if you look back on it a little bit, you'll see that grey plastic plug, which is kind of like at the end of my fingertip right there. And yeah, whatever. That's where the SCV is. So this is a short one. If you haven't seen it already, search on my channel. Rubbish, rubbish, rubbish or something along those lines because these short suction control valves are absolute rubbish. So that's getting upgraded. Um, this vehicle is going to get a genuine drive belt replaced before there's issues. Look, you know, my concern is we know the genuine parts work, okay? And a lot of these aftermarket manufacturers, I'm not sure if they've improved on quality since what they were doing in the Holden Ford days, if you know what I mean, okay? Which, it, it's a good way to do business, like, you know, things need to have a regular ongoing replacement because they're just not the best um, the Toyota stuff it just lasts so well you know that ad they say keep the feeling I've got to agree with that but as I'll say it again what I always say you've got to be careful where you go because some of these workshops and technicians working there aren't helping with you keeping the feeling so there's another call for the workshop managers and I'm not saying they're all bad there's some good Toyota workshops but a reminder for the workshop managers they really need to be all over the technicians and make sure they're trained correctly they're on the right page to make sure the jobs get done right. And of course, my training here like this is very informal and I'm happy to offer my services to you for a day or a week um, to help train the guys on the correct proper procedures and cleanliness, how things need to be done, how to use a torque wrench um, and stuff like that. If you're interested in improving your workshop, it's not a formal training system, it's like these videos. People love it, it works. Hopefully you got something out of this, guys. Um, what else can I add to it? Uh, I think that's about it, guys. So the whole reason for it breaking down could have been avoided and it was caused by a person and it was caused by a mechanic. I often joke around about, you know, mechanics and diesel fitters and whatever. It, like I said at the start, it doesn't matter who you are, what your piece of paper is. Um, you just need to get it right. And all these other bits and pieces, the leaks and weeps and things, that may or may not be. This looks like someone's been overfueling the oil. All right, guys, hopefully you got some awesome information out of that and you can avoid that breakdown and you might have learned something about your SCV and to go and check some missing nuts and bolts in case who knows who's worked on your vehicle. If you got something like that, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, if you think I've earned your subscription, go ahead and subscribe and don't forget to turn that bell on so you don't miss that next really important bit of information coming your way. Thanks for watching guys. See ya.